United Nations Security Council issues a statement condemning the multiple Houthi missile attacks on several cities in Saudi Arabia. And Egyptian President Abdel Fattah Hassisi re-elected for a second term with 92% of the vote. Hello and welcome to the 7 o'clock news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Lebrek. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa issued Edict 12 and 13 of 2018. Edict 12 stipulated the membership term renewal of the Minors Estate Council chaired by the Minister of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowment and the following members. First, Khalid Abdullah Al Shomari, Jassim Ahmed Al Sagar Al Maouda, Kazim Al Sayyid Hashim Al Hashimi. Khalil Muhammad Buhidji, Muhammad Abdullah Al Mtawar, Sadiq Eid Al Rahma, Jasim Hassan Abdul Al, Yusuf Hussain Abdul Malik. Their membership term spans to two years, which is renewable. Edict 13 of 2018 stipulated the adoption of the National Air Transport Facilitation Program and the formation of its special committee to be known as the National Committee for Air Transportation Facilitation, chaired by the Under Secretary for Civil Aviation Affairs and uh, the Under the patronage of the Royal Guard Commander, His Highness Brigadier General Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Royal Guard Day celebrations commenced yesterday, where a number of sports activities were organized in the presence of the Royal Guard Special Force Commander. His Highness Major Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the sports activities included an aquathlon, aquathlon race, cross fit competitions, volleyball and football matches, swimming competitions, tug of war and cross-country running as well as a relay race. At the end of the events, His Highness Brigadier General Sheikh Nasser honored the winners, the ceremony organizing committees and the participants in the event. His Highness congratulated the winners, wishing the other participants good luck in upcoming events. His Highness affirmed that the large participation in the events came to confirm their success and to achieve uh, the event's noble goals, noting that the championship aims to create an atmosphere of pleasure and enthusiasm among participants. He hailed the organizing procedures of the event, affirming the competition's positive impact on the Royal Guard affiliates. His Majesty the King's representative for charity work and youth affairs chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, president of Bahrain's Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, attended yesterday the concluding ceremony of His Highness's Universities League, which was held at the Lag. The ceremony was attended by the Minister of Youth and Sports Affairs, Hisham Mohammed Al Joder, in addition to a number of invitees and officials from the sports sector in the kingdom, as well as representatives from the organizing committees, the winning teams, and the 15 participating universities 
Universities. His Highness Sheikh Nasser expressed pleasure in the success of the first edition of His Highness's Universities League, which was organized by the Ministry of Youth and Sports Affairs and reflected the outstanding efforts exerted by the teams that worked as one, according to the directives, message and aspirations of His Highness uh, that are based on supporting the Bahraini University students and encouraging them to live a healthy life besides education. His Highness also said that the League encouraged the university students to unleash their athletic abilities to compete and uh, revealed uh, their potentials. His Highness Sheikh Nasser noted that the launch of the League reflected His Highness's plan to bolster sports in universities as it is uh, the starting point to the establishment of a sports union concerned with sports and universities that aim at supporting talents and helping them to be able to represent the nation in various sports related to universities at the Arab and international levels in the coming period. His Highness gave directives to hold the events annually and lauded the great role played by the Ministry of Youth and Sports Affairs under the chairmanship of the Minister of Youth in the implementation of plans and programs aimed at developing the youth and sports movement in the kingdom. اليوم هذا صحيح اسمه دوري ناصر محمد للجامعات لكن انا استاذنكم وابغي رضاكم اولا ان نحول مسمى هذا الدوري الى الدوري الوطني للجامعات بحيث اولا تكون عندنا رؤيه رقم واحد والرؤيه هي ان يكون عندنا طالب متخرج من جامعه لكنه متفوق رياضيا ومتفوق اكاديميا في نفس الوقت. رقم اثنين هي المهمه. مهمتنا بعد هذه الاستراتيجيه ان نقضي على المعتاد ونقضي على ما كان يحصل ويقام في الماضي. في الماضي وحتى يومنا هذا الطالب يختار دربين اما الجامعه اما الرياضه. انسلك درب الرياضه ما حصل الجامعة ونروح للجامعة تأخر عن الرياضة ما قدرنا نوفق بين القطاعين ولكن الآن بعد هذه المهمة تجي عندنا مرحلة التنفيذ وما في شك القطاع العام ولا بد من القطاع الخاص يدعمون بكامل الدعم لأن الإرادة الملكية وإرادة قيادتنا الرشيدة أن احنا نتم هذه الاستراتيجية لمملكة البحرين رابعا التحدي لكم أنتم أبغي أتحداكم كلكم نبغي نتحدى جميع الجامعات جميع المعاهد في مملكة البحرين أن إحنا ممكن أن نصير قصة نجاح مثل ما صار وأنتم يمكن أعلم الـ NCAA الدوري الأمريكي للجامعات هو دوري ناجح جدا يمول الدوري المحلي ويدور ويمول المنتخبات الوطنية بحيث انهم يصيرون لاعبين محترفين في المجال هذا. فدوريكم هذا كان قصير جدا لكن القصد منه هو ان احنا كنا بس نبغي التجربه. ولله الحمد استثمار جلاله الملك في المواطن البحريني ما يخيب دائما. انتم رويتونا المنافسة الشريفة رويتونا مستوى مبهر الجمهور كان عظيم 
واحنا كنا نتابعكم اول باول والروح الرياضيه عاليه جدا والروح التنافسيه كانت اعلى فاشكركم على هذه المنافسه ما بينكم وابارك للجميع كل فايز ما دام دخل هذا المجال. لكن الاهم الان ان شاء الله وب يعني دعم ان شاء الله القياده احنا راح نحول باذن الله هذا الدوري ورؤيتنا ان شاء الله يتحول هذا الدوري الى العام الدراسي كامل وليس فقط ثلاث اسابيع بس طول فترتك انت في الجامعه موجود او في هذا المعهد انت راح تدخل وتنخرط في هذا الدوري الرياضي وتمارس الرياضه بحيث ان اقدر انا اسمح للرياضي يمارس رياضته وايضا يحصل على جامعته العلميه ويحصل ان شاء الله الوظيفه اللي هو يطمح لها ويحصل المستقبل اللي هو يطمح له وندخل ان شاء الله ايضا في مجالات الرياضه لان الرياضه علم وثقافه فاحنا لازم نطور هذا المجال فاحنا يا جماعه احنا بخير ما دام شبابنا هذا هو ما دام شبابنا بهذه النوعيه واحنا بالعكس نطمح للمزيد ولا نخلى من اشواركم ولا نخلى من ارائكم وترى هذا الشعور هذا الراي شهادة أمام الله وثم أمامكم ما كان مني أنا شخصيا كان أحد من شبابكم اللي أعطاني هذه الفكرة وأنا أعطيه هذا الكريدت لأن فعلا هذه الفكرة جدا ناجحة وإحنا نتمنى إن شاء الله أفكار أزيد عشان نستثمر في شبابنا لمستقبل مملكة البحرين أنا من المؤمنين The Southern Governor Sheikh Khalifa bin Ali Al Khalifa visited the comprehensive model school project for girls in Khalifa City and was received by the Education Minister Dr. Majid Naimi and officials. Sheikh Khalifa bin Ali conveyed the directives of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa to name the school Sheikh Moza bin Hamad Al Khalifa Comprehensive School to highlight the contributions of the late Sheikh Moza, her charity and or humanitarian works. He affirmed the government's keenness to enhance the education sector for its importance in building strong societies that contribute to the progress of the kingdom. The governor affirmed that this visit reflects the keenness of the government to follow up on service projects following the directives of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister. He praised the role of the Education Ministry in implementing the project that will form an added value to the education services. He also praised the efforts of the government to enhance educational services. He said that this vital project and pioneering educational initiative will serve the people of the city of Khalifa and will improve the education and development services provided to them. He pointed out to the importance of such projects which will adopt or was what adopted by the southern governments after several meetings and visits that aim to facilitate the needs and living requirements of the people. The governor was briefed on the stages of development of the school which will include the three stages of education with integrated services accommodating about 1,700 students in addition to the members of the administrative and educational bodies. The Education Minister praised the directives of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister and praised the support provided to the Ministry which allowed it to implement a number of projects. He praised the keenness of the Southern Governor to enhance educational services. He pointed out that the school consists of five separate buildings with 48 classrooms as well as a number of advanced scientific laboratories, two design and technology laboratories, three family education laboratories and gymnasiums as well as a sewing factory two sophisticated learning resource centers, two drawing studios and integrated facilities for the administrative and educational bodies and other facilities and services. He added that the school is flexible and will further expand in the future and is expected to open during the next academic year of 2018-2019. The capital governor, Sheikh Hisham bin Abdurrahman Al Khalifa, affirmed that the government or the government's top priorities is to provide a protected environment from sources of risk and safety to the public. Referring to the functions of the restaurants inspecting a committee in the old Manama market, which ended the, inclu the inclusion of security and safety requirements in the 160 restaurants located in the market, as part of the campaign launched by the government in March last year in cooperation with the Secretariat of the Capital, the General Directorate of Civil Defense the Ministry of Health in addition to the Electricity and Water Authority. The, government, the governor said that the government is uh, cooperating 
and uh, coordinating with various bodies and was able to achieve the objectives for which the committee was established and added the committee will continue its work in monitoring and following up on these restaurants to ensure that they do not return to these violations in order to ensure a safe environment and ensure the safety of shop owners consumers. Bahrain's parliamentary delegation is on an official visit to Russia upon an invitation from the Russian state Duma. The first deputy of the Representatives Council, Speaker Ali Al-Aradi, asserted the strong Bahraini-Russian ties that are a result of the outstanding relations between His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al-Khalifa and the Russian President Vladimir Putin. Al-Aradi pointed out that the mutual interests between the Kingdom and the Russian Federation include all fields of cooperation, mainly industry, finance, tourism, culture and military. He also noted that this cooperation led to the vast number of agreements signed between the two sides. The members of the Bahrain Parliamentary Division participated in the concluding session of the 138th Union Assembly of the International Parliament. The session discussed a number of the Union's specialized meetings reports and the implementation of the Union strategy for the years 2017 to 2021 that aims to create solid and democratic uh, parliaments and enhance the protection of human rights, support the youth as well as grant women their rights. The Assembly concluded its work by adopting the decisions of the Committee on Peace and International Security and the Committee on Sustainable Development Economy and Trade. In our international news, members of the United Nations Security Council issued a statement condemning in the strongest possible terms the multiple Houthi missile attacks on several cities in Saudi Arabia. The members of the Security Council underlined that such attacks pose a serious national security threat to the kingdom as well as a wider threat to regional security. The members of the council also expressed alarm at the state intention of the Iran allied militia to continue these attacks against Saudi Arabia as well as to launch additional attacks against other states in the region. Saudi Saudi Arabia's air forces have responded to 104 ballistic missiles launched by Iran-backed Houthi terrorist militias on the kingdom since uh, the June 6, 2015. Meanwhile, as EU ambassadors began discussing EU sanctions on Iran, diplomats said talks in European capitals were moving to impose new sanctions against Iran for a number of reasons, including the ballistic missiles fired by the Houthis on Riyadh and other Saudi cities last Sunday. Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi has been re-elected for a second term with 92% of the vote. State media reported today citing parliamentary results. Pro-government media said there was a turnout hovering around 40%. Vote uh, counting began after polls closed late yesterday, wrapping up three days of voting. Official results are expected on April the 2nd. Egyptian authorities went to great lengths to bolster turnouts in a bid to give the election legitimacy. Moroccan security services succeeded in throttling a dangerous terrorist plot aimed at destabilizing the country today, according to a statement from the Moroccan Ministry of Interior. Security services dismantled a terror cell consisting of eight members between the ages of 21 and 31. The cell was operating in the cities of Oudim and Tangier, and its members held extremist views in line with Daesh ideology. The statement said that investigations revealed the suspects were searching for raw materials so that they could manufacture explosive devices and belts and carry out high-level terrorist operations targeting sensitive sites in a number of cities in the country. Here's Abba Abdel Ghaffar with the latest business news. Thank you, Zara. A very good evening. You're watching the Business News in Bahrain International with me, Hibab Abdul Ghaffar. 
Bahrain All Share Index has closed at 1,318.4 points, marking an increase of 3.27 points above the previous closing. The increase was in the commercial banks, investment, insurance and industrial sectors, and investors traded mainly in the commercial banks sector, representing 60% of the total value of traded shares. Results indicated that 62 equity transactions took place with a volume of 1,646,525 shares, worth 443,893 Bahraini dinars. CEO of Bahrain Airport Company, Mohammed Ali bin Al Falah, presented a session on Bahrain International Airport's ongoing modernization program at the Passenger Terminal Expo and Conference 2018 in Stockholm. He pointed out that the 1.1 billion US dollar program is one of the most important projects in Bahrain's aviation history. The program is a catalyst for transformation and growth that will maximize the aviation sector's contribution to the economy. In line with Bahrain's vision 2030, he added the new 220,000 square meter passenger terminal building which is scheduled for completion by the third quarter of 2019 will expand the airport's capacity to 14 million passengers a year it will offer passengers an improved travel experience by catering to their needs and exceeding their expectations al rajhi capital issued a report on saudi banks regarding the fourth quarter of the last year the report revealed that the growth of loans and deposits has continued horizontally. al rajhi Capital also said that net profit for banks in the fourth quarter rose by almost 31% year-on-year, while for January 2018 it fell by 4.3%. The volume of loans showed market interaction with market variables and also re-evaluated few companies. Egypt's GDP rose by 5.3% during the second quarter of this fiscal year, compared to 5.2% in the first quarter. Unemployment fell in the second quarter to 11.3%, its lowest level since 2011. Since November 2016, Egypt has reduced the value of its domestic currency, abolished the maximum foreign exchange remittance and restrictions on foreign currency to importers cut subsidies on domestic fuel and increased value-added tax. So by early December 2016, foreign holdings of Treasury bills hit a record increase of 338 billion Egyptian pounds, reaching 532 million Egyptian pounds. Official statistics show today that Turkey posted strong economic growth last year, confirming the country's status as one of the world's fastest growing economies. GDP growth came in at 7.4% in 2017 from the previous year, above the market consensus of 7.25%. In the fourth quarter alone, the Turkish economy grew by 7.3% year-on-year after a revised 11.3% increase in the third quarter. Data from Turkish Statistics Institute showed that growth was driven by industrial services and construction sectors. Turkish Economy Minister Nihad Zeybeki welcomed the spectacular achievement in a statement, saying that it meant Turkey now ranked first among the D20 economies. Apple CEO Tim Cook announced extra funding for the China Development Research Foundation, a Chinese government think tank. Speaking at a business forum in Beijing, he said Apple would donate almost 4 million US dollars to provide training and support to children in some of the poorest parts of China. The China Development Forum 2018 is taking place amidst a spiraling dispute with US President Donald Trump over steel and technology. And today, I couldn't be prouder to announce a second donation of 25 million RMB to CDRF's poor digitalization program. Apple's contribution will help more than 300,000 students from kindergarten to middle school in less developed areas find their way out of poverty through support and training. 
India is on course to meet 2017-2018 fiscal deficit target. A top finance ministry official said today that India will meet its fiscal deficit target of 3.5% of GDP for the 2017-2018 fiscal year ending this month. Economic Affairs Secretary Subhash Chandra Garg said on Twitter that they now have preliminary numbers until the 28th of March, adding that they indicate that the government is very close to the revised fiscal deficit and revenue deficit estimates for the current fiscal year. Yesterday, India reported a fiscal deficit of 110.42 billion US dollars for April to February, which is 120.3 percent of the budgeted target for the current fiscal year. That's it from the business desk and it's back to you, Sarah. Thank you, Eba.